What's going on you guys? Welcome back to Lemaster Tech YouTube and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install your own DIY mini split air conditioning unit. I have to start with a disclaimer for a project this big. You need to feel comfortable with electricity. This project involves hooking up refrigeration lines and if you do release all of the refrigerant in your system it can be almost as expensive as the unit itself to get a recharge of refrigerant. And there's also putting holes through walls and pulling vacuum in this project so this is not a beginner friendly DIY. There are some very serious, very difficult things in this. So just know if any of those concepts make you uncomfortable, it might actually be worth it to call a professional. But assuming you're the motivated type, let's talk about how you can install it and not just why you shouldn't install it. Now the unit I put in my garage is the Cooper and Hunter Olivia edition, which is the black edition because I painted my garage black. My parents have a Dell unit. I went with a Cooper and Hunter and I can promise you the steps in this video are exactly the same for both. And based on what I've seen online, they should be pretty much exactly the same for whatever make and model you go with. A few things you can do to make your life a little bit easier before beginning install are getting yourself a wall mount or ground mount kit for your exterior unit and consider getting yourself a cable guide so you can cover up all of the wires and plumbing that are gonna go through the wall. And two last things of pre-work you can do are make sure you have a vacuum pump on hand. If you don't have one already, they're not super expensive and a lot of them come with a refrigerant leak detector. I can leave a link to the one that I got for doing this project. And the last thing of pre-work is just locate an available circuit that you're confident can power your unit. Okay, but that's all the disclaimers and all the pre-work. Let's dive into the actual steps of installing your own split mini. So your kit is gonna arrive typically in two or maybe three boxes, the indoor unit, the outdoor unit, and sometimes there's an accessories box. Some kits come with the accessories packed into those first two boxes. But the first step is going to be marking and mounting your indoor bracket onto the wall for your indoor unit. Some kits come with a template, other kits just tell you to use the bracket itself to mount it on the wall and you want to try to hit a couple of studs. Next it's time to mark and drill the hole for the cable pass through to the wall and this is something important about split minis. The indoor unit condenses a lot of vapor as it dehumidifies as part of the air conditioning process and so there's a leakage hose, a drainage hose that feeds out from that unit so you need to have an exterior wall. But in any case, follow the instructions on your specific unit on where to mark and cut the hole to the outside. Also, all kits specify making sure that the inner wall to outer wall is angled downward slightly. This helps with drainage. Okay, so with your bracket mounted and your hole cut through the wall, next you want to gently bend the refrigerant lines out of the indoor unit, kind of at a 90 degree angle, and feed the indoor to outdoor electrical cable that should have come with the kit into the front face plate of your indoor unit. You're then going to need to remove a few screws from the wiring face plate on the front of the unit. Follow the schematic that comes with your unit. Most of the time at this point you have a line, neutral, ground, and signal wires. Once you're done hooking up the wire to the indoor unit, close that face plate back up and now it's time to bundle the four things we're passing through the wall together. Every kit that I've seen comes with this plumber's tape. I don't super love it. It's not sticky, which is maybe the point, but all instructions are very clear. You want the drainage hose on the bottom so that if it does leak or kink or anything like that, it doesn't get your electrical cable or your refrigerant lines wet. So take your four components to get passed through the wall, bundle them together with plumber's tape just up to the point that they currently go. Cut it and possibly fix it with some electrical tape or something that is sticky because now it's time to pass it through the wall. Now for feeding it through the wall, this is probably the most awkward step in the entire process. If you have a second person around who can help you, get on a ladder or on a step stool or something and help guide these through the wall, I recommend finding that friend now. I did mine on my own. It was extremely difficult and rather irritating, but maybe I'm just being a baby. In any case, you have to feed that bundle of those four components to refrigerant lines, the drainage hose and the electrical wire all through that hole. And then with them sort of precariously balanced in that hole, you need to mount the indoor unit onto the bracket and then get it to sit flat without damaging anything that you have fed through the wall. And if you get to this step, your inside the house work, other than the final electrical connection to the exterior unit, 
is done. So at this point, it's time to pivot to the outside. Now, the first thing you want to do with the outside unit before connecting it to any of the stuff we just fed through the wall is mount it. If you have a floor mount kit, you wanna make sure that it's going on a level surface, typically fixed to some concrete footers. But in any case, I leave it up to you to find a good wall mount kit. There are tons of universal mini split wall mount kits, as well as conduit guides, which I'll also link below if you wanna use the ones I show here. Now with the outdoor unit in place, take the refrigerant line connectors that should have been included with your system. And there should be a thicker and a thinner one, a high pressure and low pressure refrigerant line. Most kits sell them with already flared connections, which is nice because having to flare your own copper ends is not crazy difficult, but it's a whole new set of tools you're gonna have to get probably just for this one application. In any case, follow your kit's instructions if there are any special instructions on how to connect your flare connectors. But in general, you just wanna make sure that the flared part of your copper has a good seat on the nozzle end of the thing it's connecting to. The refrigerant lines are flexible because they're made of copper tubing, which bends very easily. But because it bends very easily, you need to be extra careful not to cause any kinks. So being careful not to do any super sharp turns, get those refrigerant lines connected both to the existing piece of copper coming out of the indoor line and then to the inlet ports on the outdoor unit. You don't have to worry too much about getting these right because there's a smaller one and a larger one and the nuts that come with them typically won't fit on the wrong port. Now with the copper lines connected, we can get started on pulling our vacuum, which is gonna be something kind of new for a lot of DIYers. It was new for me when I did this project, but basically the vacuum pump should come with everything you need to get started if you bought any like standard kit. So basically you're going to hook the vacuum pump up to the middle port of the manifold typically. You're gonna keep the red valve or high pressure valve closed and then open the low pressure valve blue valve most of the time to the service port on the back side of one of the valves on your outdoor unit and at this point you still have the valves that are actually going to load the pre-charged refrigerant into the system closed most kits say to run the vacuum pump for around 15 minutes to pull vacuum there's no reason not to take a little extra time here give it a half hour give it an hour pull vacuum, you should be pulling pretty close to the bottom of your gauge. Most standard vacuum pumps come with a gauge that only goes down to like negative 0.1 megapascal or negative one bar. All this vacuum is pulling because I recommend leaving it going for 30 minutes to maybe an hour. That's a good time to take a look at connecting the electrical cable from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. It's the same wiring as was on the indoor unit. So double check what you did to the indoor unit make sure that you do the same landings to the outdoor unit. This is extremely important. And at this point, the only thing we haven't connected yet is the power from the indoor circuit that's actually going to be supplying the whole system to our heat pump on the outside. All right, so once you've pulled vacuum for 15, 30, more like an hour, I'd recommend, it's time to test your vacuum. So you turn the vacuum pump off, but you leave the gauge connected. Okay, so most of the time, this just looks like closing the valve on the manifold, the blue valve, from your vacuum pump and then turning off your vacuum pump. This way the gauge will still be reading the pressure in those lines. You won't be pulling additional vacuum. So for 15, 30 minutes, maybe more like an hour if you like listening to me, keep an eye on that gauge because you should be maintaining the negative one bar pressure that you've pulled, negative 30 PSI roughly. And it really shouldn't drift or creep up much from that because you should have vacuum tight lines. So if after 15 minutes, 30 minutes, it's drifted up significantly, you need to check each copper fitting that you made and possibly break it and retighten it if you've lost a lot of pressure or try pulling vacuum again and running the test again. Losing your pressure during vacuum checking is not a step where you go, oh, well, good enough. Because if you're losing pressure, that means when you release refrigerant into these lines, your system is going to drain the refrigerant within a day, I guarantee you. And that is several hundred dollars to have a professional technician come out and fix and recharge. But assuming your vacuum is holding really, really well, then now is the time to crack one of the valves from your heat pump to the refrigerant lines. Most manuals say only a quarter of a turn for about five seconds. And the purpose of this is now we're going to check each fitting for a refrigerant leak. So go ahead and crack it, 
close it again. And then using a halogen leak detector, which comes with most vacuum pump kits, go ahead and sniff around every copper connection again in your system and make sure you're not getting leaks. By far the most common place that you would be getting leaks is at the connections, but it's not a bad idea to run it up and down the length of your whole copper. Assuming no leak was detected, your system is vacuum tight, with the valve still closed, go ahead and remove your vacuum pump now from the service port. And it's vacuum charged, so you're gonna lose a little air when you do that. Just try to remove it as quick as you can and then put the service port cap back on. Now, with the service port cap back on, your system holds vacuum appropriately, you've tested it, open those valves from the heat unit into the entire system. And at this point, your whole system will be flooded with refrigerant. You can usually hear the refrigerant flooding into the copper as you open the heat pump valves. You open those valves all the way, put the caps that come with it back on, and now we're ready to do the final connection, which is hooking up the power to the heat pump unit, and then we'll turn it on and test it. And do not hook it up to a live circuit. Make sure you have the circuit turned off at the breaker. Most of the time, you're only gonna need three cables now, line, neutral, and ground from your circuit into the unit. Hook up the power source from your indoor circuit to the heat pump, close that interface up. Most of the time you'll be feeding it through ports in the bottom, so screw it back on to the external part of your heat pump. Now you're ready to energize the circuit from inside. If you did it right, you won't trip a circuit breaker or anything like that, and you most of the time will see the LED display on the indoor unit turn off. Now the best way to test it is to turn it on and let it run. All right, my garage is in the heart of Texas and it was like a 90 degree day when I got it working. So I noticed that it was working within a few minutes. Back within an hour and the garage was probably 15 degrees cooler. So yeah, it was pretty clear that it was working. And that is it for installing your own split mini. I know there's a ton of steps. As I said, kind of early in this video, this is not a beginner friendly DIY. This is a pretty advanced DIY which means you should feel awesome if you do it yourself, but you should also not feel bad calling a professional if this is too difficult. I will leave links to all of the hardware that I used below. Be sure if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.